Tim Trail calls David Shamo. <coughs> sit down and uh, raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the evidence you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I did. State your name for the record. David Shamo. Spell your last name. S H A M M O. Your witness. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Shamo, what's your business address? Uh, my business address is Spectre Energy Corp. 2701 North Rocky Point Drive, Suite 1050, Tampa, Florida, 33607. And your current title or position? I am Vice President, Business Development, Southeast Operations for Spectre Energy Corp. It's a U.S. pipeline uh, business unit. And what is the uh, your affiliation with the Sable Trail Transmission LLC? <coughs> Sable Trail is a joint venture um, between Spectre Energy Corp, NextEra Energy, and Duke Energy. Uh, I've been involved in the development of the project since its inception, um, and the um, uh, the, the, the the joint venture nature, you know, obviously have, have been involved in, in uh, those relationships since the beginning. And of the three entities that are within that joint venture, what is Spectre Energy Corp's role in the joint venture? Spectre Energy is responsible for the execution of the project, uh, which would include the design, construction, operation, and maintenance. And what are your current responsibilities and duties relative to the Sable Trail project? On, on behalf of uh, Spectre Energy Corp, um, I'm responsible for the all commercial and business activities related to the, to the project. Uh, including developing opportunities with either new or existing customers, and I have to provide overall direction um, and management of the administrative functions that are related to the uh, Referring now to uh, Winder Graham. Uh, Your Honor, it's in the, the, the box under your jacket. Your jacket. <laughs> binder name. Label prima facie, the very first binder. Other second. Second. Uh, referring to tab two in the binder, which is binder is labeled prima facie, and the tab is Spectra, excuse me, for exhibit for identification number two, um, which we have a large version of on the easel behind you. Would you please describe the Sable Trail project? Uh, yes, uh, so Sable Trail Transmission is a uh, natural gas transmission pipeline. Its primary purpose initially is to provide, um, to support electric generation needs uh, in the state of Florida. Um, also with opportunities to serve markets in Alabama and Georgia. Uh, the project starts in the vicinity of Transco Station 85 and extends to the Central Florida hub in Osceola County, Florida. And with reference to the large version of the exhibit, would you just point out, please, Transco 85 and the Central Florida hub? Transco Station 85 is here, Central Florida hub is here. What is Transco? Uh, Transco is an acronym for Transcontinental Gas Pipeline Company, LLC. Um, it is a um, long line trans natural gas transmission pipeline system um, extending from the Gulf Coast to the New York area. And what is Transco Station 85? Transco Station 85 is a, um, it's a point um, along their system where a number of other pipelines bring natural gas supplies. Um, to to that point on their system. Why is Sable Trail proposing to build a proposed new pipeline? Uh, Sable Trail is building a proposed new pipeline. We've entered into contracts, uh, long-term contracts, to provide uh, transportation services to two Florida utilities. And which two utilities have you entered into contracts with? That would be Duke Energy Florida and Florida Power and Light Company. And what is the term natural gas supply diversity mean? 
for a for an end user or a consumer of natural gas, um, natural gas supply diversity um, we would refer to um, its ability to access multiple points of supply. And will the Sable Trail project improve natural gas supply diversity? Yes, it will. Um, that Sable Trail was designed to um, access the multiple supply um, options that are coming into Transco Station 85, um, thereby providing access to its customers to abundant um, supply resources, whether that be traditional Gulf of Mexico, whether that be onshore uh, reliable um, supply uh, points. What is meant by the term natural gas supply reliability? Natural gas supply reliability would be, again, for an end user or a consumer of natural gas, it would be um, a redundant um, uh, opportunity for them to access multiple transportation options. And will Sable Trail improve natural gas supply reliability? Yes, Sable Trail will, um, again, for the southeast in general, Florida in particular being a third pipeline into Florida, will provide um, those options to its end users. Mr. Parkin, let me ask you a uh, basic question. The uh, permit that's at issue, it, it involves uh, all, this, all the uh, installation in Florida. Is that correct? That is correct. So any, and, and it's, a, it's one permit for that entire segment in Florida? Yes, Your Honor. So yeah. that any, any challenger to, for any, any portion of the pipeline would have to be in this proceeding? Uh, in terms of the ERP, uh, yes, Your Honor. There are some ancillary permits that will be required. For instance, a consumptive use permit for dewatering and that sort of thing. So this is the only challenge to the ERP? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Shamo, are, are you familiar with the request for proposals for natural gas transportation services that Florida Power and Light issued in 2012? Yes, I am. And why did FPL issue that RFP? In 2009, the Florida Public Service Commission um, established a need for additional pipeline transportation capacity into the state of Florida. Uh, to meet the growing electric um, generation need within the state. Um, so, at, and, and essentially ordered uh, at that time FPL to um, issue an RFP establishing their need, their, their needs, uh, long-term needs um, for new generation um, and requesting um, third parties to submit proposals um, for new gas pipeline infrastructure into the state. And how, how do you know that there is a growing demand for gas? Well, you can, um, but according to the to the RFP, um, when you look at the generation mix in Florida, in particular, um, the recent um, conversions that Florida Power and Light has undertaken. Um, they have converted, or, or in the process of converting, three uh, lean oil um, fired gas uh, fired plants to natural gas, uh, high efficient combined cycle natural gas plants. Uh, those would be at, um, at uh, Canaveral, Riviera Beach, Port Everglades. In addition, uh, they have recently filed a petition of need with the Florida Public Service Commission for a new generation um, combined cycle gas fired generation plant in Okeechobee County, uh, Florida. Uh, Duke Energy um, as well um, has just received a um, determination of need from the Florida Public Service Commission and its Natural Gas uh, Siting Act um, certification for a new um, high efficient combined cycle natural gas plant in Citrus County, Florida. Um, and that comes on the heels of Duke Energy um, filing to um, displace or retire three existing units at its Crystal River um, footprint, the um, two coal units and one nuclear unit. What would happen if the Sable Trail pipeline was not complete? Well, Florida... Objection, Your Honor. Mr. Brightman, I'm, I anticipate there'll be a lot of objections from yours. 
side of the room um, about relevance. And so I'm not sure why we need to get into need and what ifs uh, and stick to the pipeline and see. Your Honor, if we are to litigate the um, entitlement for an easement over sovereign submerged lands, the public interest test that is required to demonstrate the entitlement to that easement uh, requires a balancing of the social, economic, and environmental pros and cons. And the intent to, of these questions is to show that the Sable Trail pipeline will have social, economic, and environmental benefits to the state of Florida. All right. And how about this issue of speculation? What's your response to that? Well, I, this witness just testified about um, the benefits that the pipeline would have in, in that regard. Uh, and this was just another attempt to, to emphasize the fact that without the project, those benefits would not accrue. All right. So that's it. Yes. What more do we need? I'll move on, Your Honor. Before the Honor, if I may, is that. Mr. Shamu called as an expert witness or fact witness? There's been no motion to qualify him as an expert, Your Honor. Hence, hence the question for the court. Well, my understanding without a motion that a ruling that he's not an expert. Uh, you, you haven't objected to any particular question as one that only an expert can answer. So at this point, I, I don't see any problem with it. Kind of testimony he's given so far as the well, I, I, project manager. It was unclear to me if we're laying a predicate for the gentleman as a for the witness as an expert or not, or if we're or into the question. I, I don't intend to elicit any opinion testimony from this witness, Your Honor. All right. Your objections are overruled. You may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Shamo, what would happen if the stable trail pipeline was not completed? Objection, Your Honor. It's hypothetical. It's not an expert. It's hypothetical. Oh, well, go ahead. Uh, well, a number of things. Uh, Florida would, would not have the benefit of, um, we, we talked about um, the, the uh, reliability um, and, and the deliverability of the pipeline uh, itself, which would provide tremendous access for end users in Florida to, uh, to multiple uh, new um, supply sources, um, competition within the state. It's the third pipeline that will serve Peninsula, Florida, um, so it will immediately create um, competition um, within the state. Um, it provides uh, diversity of supply access, um, again, which is tremendously important to end users within the state. And then there are the economic benefits uh, this project of the magnitude of Sable Trail provides, both in um, temporary uh, uplift during construction, as well as long-term uh, benefits from the increased tax base. Mr. Shamo, referring to tab three in your binder that is labeled prima facie, uh, are you familiar with the exhibit that is marked as Sable Trail Exhibit for Identification Number Three? I am. And what is that exhibit? This, uh, this exhibit shows the Florida portion of Sable Trail Pipeline. And is that uh, exhibit displayed in larger size behind you there? It is. Uh, to your knowledge, is this map a, a depiction of the current proposed route of the pipeline? It is. And would you, in with reference to that map, show where the pipeline enters the state of Florida? Yes, pipeline enters the state um, just east of the Withlacoochee River in the Hamilton County. And where will it end? It ends in uh, at the Central Florida Hub in Osceola County. And you mentioned several um, demand centers or end users of the pipeline in Florida. Would you? very quickly point out their general location on yeah. that map? Yes, sir. Um, to the extent that they're reflected here. So uh, FPL's facilities are along the eastern eastern coast, uh, Cape Canaveral, 
is um, almost due east of the end terminus of, of Sable Trail along the, the coast. Riviera Beach is further down the coast, um, and then Port Everglades is, is just uh, north of uh, Fort Lauderdale, uh, and Okeechobee County would be slightly north and and, uh, and west of that location. Duke Energy's um, Citrus County plant is here at the end of the of the lateral pipeline here. Mr. Shamo, Sable Trail doesn't seem to connect to those demand centers, at least the uphill demand centers that you mentioned. How will the gas be delivered to those units? Uh, Sable Trail will be interconnecting to Florida Southeast Connection, which is a another um, uh, transmission pipeline, natural gas transmission pipeline, which will re-deliver the gas received from Sable Trail uh, to delivery points further south in Florida. And where will that interconnection occur? That interconnection will occur here in Osceola County at the Central Florida Hub. Will Sable Trail connect or interconnect with uh, any other pipelines at the Central Florida Hub? Yes, it will. So there are the two existing pipelines in Florida, our Gulf Stream Natural Gas System Pipeline and the Florida Gas Transmission Pipeline. Um, the Gulf Stream Natural Gas Pipeline interconnect is here in Osceola County. Um, through a, um, a, a mainline extension, we'll interconnect with the Florida Gas Transmission Pipeline in Orange County. Other than Gulfstream and FGT or Florida Gas Transmission that you mentioned, are there any other uh, major pipelines providing gas to gas transportation services to Peninsula, Florida? No, not currently. What are the advantages of having uh, both the existing pipelines serving Florida and the proposed new pipeline all interconnecting at that location? It's it's purely reliability. So um, with with those interconnections to those other pipelines, um, if there's a uh, an event, could be a weather event in the Gulf that's disrupting supplies, um, that interconnection strengthens the pipeline grid in Florida and provides alternative um, receipts and delivery capabilities for the customers. In addition, if there were an upstream condition on either Gulf Stream um, pipeline or the Florida Gas Transmission Pipeline that would cause um, uh, a, a inability to move gas, um, again, upstream or, or further uh, north on those pipelines, uh, those pipelines could receive gas from Sable Trail and continue to make delivery. Uh, again, with reference to the Florida route map, would you please identify the Citrus County line? Yes, Citrus County line is marked here in orange, stems from um, Sable Trail uh, to the to the Deep Energy, Florida. And what is the purpose of that line? Uh, it will serve, provide natural gas supply to Duke Energy, Florida's new um, state-of-the-art, high, highly efficient combined cycle uh, generating plant. And really, just for nomenclature at this point, because I think you already mentioned it, would you also identify the Hunter's Creek line on the map? Yes, Hunter's Creek is noted by the green line here. Um, its purpose is for the, to effectuate the interconnect with Florida Gas Transmission, again extending from Osceola County to uh, Orange County. Other than the pipeline, the underground portion of the project, are there above ground facilities proposed as a part of the Sable Trail project? Yes, there would be um, two types of above ground facilities. There would be compressor stations and metering, metering and regulating stations. And very briefly, please describe what is a compressor station? Compressor stations uh, serve to push the gas through the pipeline. And briefly, what is a meter and regulation station? Um, as, as the name implies, it provides uh, measurement, me metering uh, functions, which measures the volume of gas and provides regulating functions, which regulates the pressure of gas in the pipeline. Uh, and again, with reference to the map, can you just briefly point out the locations of the compressor stations? Yes, in Florida there will be three compressor stations. Uh, the first one is in Suwannee County. It's referred to as our Hildreth Station. Uh, what station? It's called the Hildreth Station. Hildreth? And in, in, um, that down here where the, uh, where the Citrus County line comes off of the main line, that is our Danella compressor station. And then uh, at the end of the system at the Central Florida Hub is our reunion station. <coughs> And where are the meter and regulation stations? 
The metering and regulating stations will be wherever we have a receipt for a delivery interconnection on the pipeline. Um, so that there will be either at the compressor stations or at or at one of those interconnects if they occur outside of the compressor station. Uh, I'd like to turn briefly to the proposed activities and how they will be managed. Uh, what entity will construct the pipeline? Sable Train. Sable Trail Transmission LLC. And how does Sable Trail Transmission LLC have the legal capacity to ensure that the activities will be undertaken in accordance with permit requirements? Well, Sable Objection, Trail is a compound question. Pardon? <coughs> Objecting to the question as being a compound question. Terms and conditions, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> Try to win. Thank you, Your Honor. How does Sable Trail Transmission have the legal capacity to ensure that the activity will be undertaken in accordance with the permit? Uh, objection to the extent this calls for it. Do you want my, to speak to us my exception? Your what? Grounds for the objection. Does the owner want me to state the grounds or just object? Uh, you have to give it a name so I know what you're talking uh, about, whether it's hearsay or no relevance. I'll call for a legal conclusion. Sounds like a May I rephrase, Your Honor? Yes. Thank you. How does Sable Trail Transmission have the ability to ensure that the activity will be undertaken in accordance with the permit? Objection. To, uh, again, Your Honor, the witness is for Spectra Energy at Sable Trail. Your Honor, the witness testified that Sable Trail had the... Uh, on that point. Uh, the question is kind of vague. I mean, uh, how he knows it will perform percent of all? I'm not sure what you're trying to say. Why? How does he know that they'll comply with all regulations? I'll, I'll rephrase that. But it's the condition it's a squirt. Yeah, we, we're, we're trying to track some of the language in it's, some of the applicant handbooks. And, but I, I can get there by a simpler question. What, what is the legal nature of Sable Trail Transmission LLC? Is it a corporation? Is it incorporated in Florida? Oh, yeah, it's a, it, it is a, it, it's a valid business entity. It's a, a limited liability company. Um, it's actually a Delaware limited liability company authorized to do business in Alabama, Georgia, and Florida. And how will Sable Trail what people will Sable Trail rely upon to execute the project? Um, well, Sable Trail had, will, will rely on, on experts that have, that have um, uh, been involved in, in major projects um, previously. Um, they will be employees of affiliates of Spectra Energy Corp. Uh, they will be outside contractors um, and consultants, uh, again, all of who have um, had a tremendous amount of experience. Uh, in developing projects of this magnitude uh, in, in the past, um, including uh, working with permitting agencies, uh, collaborating on, um, on issues that arise um, and, and the mitigation of those issues. And how will Sable Trail have the financial capability to execute the project? Again, Sable Trail is a joint venture. Um, its members are Spectra Energy Corp, uh, NextEra Energy, and Duke Energy. With that structure, there's a tremendous amount of financial flexibility available uh, to the project um, and, and a, a significant amount of financial backing to, uh, to support the project. You mentioned, I believe, earlier in your testimony that Sable Trail had entered into contracts with, uh, I believe you said FPL and Duke. Um, Does Sable Trail get compensation under those contracts? It, it, it does. And those rates, did they include uh, financial resources to provide for operational maintenance? They would. And specifically with regard to mitigation required for the project, how will Sable Trail provide the financial assurances for mitigation? Wetland mitigation, I'm sorry. Yeah. So, so uh, Sable Trail has already acquired the, uh, the credits, the, the mitigation credits that uh, they would need, and has provided documentation to DEV that it has 
uh, acquired those, those credits. Um, and prior to construction, um, Sable Trail will, um, will be required to demonstrate to the DEP uh, that they've applied those credits against uh, the, the appropriate mitigation bank. And which entity will be responsible for the long-term operation and maintenance of the surface water management facilities associated with the project? That would be safe trail transmission. And after construction is complete, who will own or control all the property upon which all of the permitted facilities are located? Safe trail transmission. How will the Sable Trail meet the uh, reporting requirements required by the permit? Um, the Sable Trail will rely on, on forms provided to it by DEP. And um, how will Sable Trail convert uh, the project from the construction phase to the operation phase. Yeah, again, DP has a has a form for this. And prior to construction, um, or post construction, sorry, um, Sable Trail will provide um, as built drawings um, to demonstrate that it is complied with all of the permit conditions. No further questions. Does uh, DP wish to ask any questions of the witness? No, sir. Cross examination. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Shannon, how long have you been with Spectre Energy? I'll be 35 years next May. Have you heard of a company called Next Era Energy Inc.? I have. And, and how do you know that company? They're, uh, Next Era Energy is a partner in Sable Trail. Are they uh, Next Energy Inc.? One of the three entities that you refer to as a uh, joint venture in this project? It is. So the uh, Sable Trip, Spectre Energy, and, and the third energy is Next Energy? The Sable Trail is made up of, of three members of Spectre Energy Corp., Next Era Energy, and Duke Energy. So Duke is a member of Sable Trail for this project? Correct. And Next Era, I'm sorry, Next Era Energy is one of the three. And I'm sorry, who's the third? Spectre Energy. Right, so your company is one of three entities that make up Sable Trail. That is correct. And you stated that your role is administrative functions, did you? That is a, a primary function that I perform on behalf of Spectra Energy for the benefit of the joint venture. How would you uh, describe administrative functions in that, that regard? i uh, responsible for uh, commercial business fun uh, activities uh, as well as managing the administrative <coughs> um, responsibilities for the joint venture. Administrative function is managing administrative function. That's right. That's, that, that would be providing to the um, owner's request for approval to, to take certain actions, um, providing um, records that, that come from various parts of the, of the organization, reports. As a part of your administrative functions, you do participate in a DEP application that is subject to today's hearing? I'm familiar with it. I didn't participate actively in the preparation of it. How did you become familiar with it? Uh, as in my role as, as uh, being responsible, having overall responsibility for the joint venture. So how do you distinguish being familiar with it from taking part in it, if you will? I, I didn't actively provide inputs into the, into the application. You ready? I read not not from beginning to end, but yes, I read excerpts from it. Do you recall uh, from beginning to end how many pages that is? I do not. Do you recall how many pages you read? I do not. You 
you stated that there's no other, if I recall your testimony correctly, that there's no other natural gas line pipelines currently bringing uh, that utility in the northern corridor. Was that your testimony? Objection, Your Honor. It's a mischaracterization of the testimony. So he's asking if it is correct. Yeah, would you clarify it if I'm incorrect, sir? Uh, stated differently, is that correct or incorrect? Could, could you restate the question? Yes, sir. Um, did you state that there's no other utility presently in the northern corridor of Florida to transmit the uh, pipeline, uh, the volume of pipe, of uh, the natural gas that this pipeline will transmit? I did not. Do you recall the statement you made about no other current utilities in Florida? Uh, I, I, I do not recall the statement I made about no other utilities in Northern Florida. Are you aware of any other uh, permit applications currently pending for a similar project? Similar, I mean, natural gas coming down from the north into Florida? I'm not. Uh, you're, you're speaking other than the same trail. Other than the trail, are you aware of any other projects currently pending? Florida, no. You're with a company called Kinder Morgan? I am. Uh, are you familiar with any gasoline pipelines in, uh, not, I'm sorry, gas, uh, natural gas in Suwannee County, between Suwannee County and Jacksonville, that corridor of Florida? I'm familiar with an existing Kinder Morgan pipe that, that extends right. through that general portal. Thank you. Are you familiar with any other pending projects to expand delivery in that corridor? I'm not. Would you agree if there were other projects? Well, first of all, I'll strike that. Um, your testimony is that this project is necessary to bring natural gas through the corridor it's slated to bring? Yes, I do. That, that is my testimony. And you made a reference to a public service commission establishing a need in 2009? Correct. Uh, can you uh, uh, explain to me what part of the state that need refers to? It, it was uh, as a result of a petition for a power and light and submitted to the commission for a new pipeline to, to serve needs along the east coast. And is the Sable Trail pipeline going down the east coast? The Sable Trail pipeline is delivering gas to other proposed or existing pipelines that will serve the east coast. But there's not been any uh, permit process to connect those other pipelines, has there? Touching your honor today, which other pipelines is it talking about? Any other ones you just referred to? Is that the objection? Uh, those facilities would be interconnected to the existing Florida gas transmission pipeline. Uh, and I also testified that the Florida Southeast Connection is a new natural gas transmission line that is currently proposed. But you made a reference to tremendous access to end users in Florida. Can you explain what you mean by tremendous access? Well, again, um, something that I thought was up there, it's not up there, but the, um, the, the supply access that's afforded to customers of Sable Trail um, through access to the Transco Station 85. I also had mentioned that, that there are multiple pipelines um, delivering gas supply into the vicinity of Transco Station 85. Sable Trail will allow access to those uh, natural gas supplies. And did uh, you state that these pipeline would create competition in this state? Yes, sir. What kind of competition are you referring to? There would be gas on gas competition. It's, it's introducing a third pipeline to provide transportation services to the state. All right. Well, uh, which gas company would you be competing with that you're not going to connect with at some point, if any? Well, we're going to interconnect with the other two existing pipelines. And how does that compete with them by connecting with them? Well, it, 
competition would, would resolve from incremental um, access or capacity in the state that customers would have an option to choose to serve their needs. But if a customer, if I understand you correctly, if a customer choose, well, well, Duke is part of this, so who would they choose that's not part of the same trail that would be a competitor for which this creates competition? Objection, aren't you? The question is vague. I don't know what he's talking about. Who would they choose? What the customer. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Uh, can you give me an example of a customer, an end user, to use your term, uh, that would benefit by the competition? I would say any end user in Florida. If I understand correctly, correct me if I'm wrong, that No new company that's not already in Florida is being introduced through the, this joint venture. Is that correct? No new company. I, 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 well, does I Duke that. already have uh, business in Florida? They do. Florida Power Light does. They do. Does Sable Trail? Sable Trail is a proposed natural gas transmission pipeline. So they currently have no business in Florida? They do not. Will Spectra Energy build the pipeline? Correct. Will Spectra Energy operate the pipeline? They will. Will anyone else, any other businesses? Let me, can, can, I, can I qualify that? Sable Trail yes, Transmission please. will build and operate the pipeline. It will rely on Spectra Energy Corp to provide services to, to build the pipeline. The joint venture is, um, what's the name, does the joint venture have a name? Sable Trail Transmission, LLC. All right, and it, it has three members. One is Duke, one is Sable Trail itself, no. No. Okay. one is Spectra Energy, and the other is Nextra Energy? Correct. Right. So, Sable, okay, I understand, thank you. a reference to a uh, compression station in Hildreth? Well, reference is a proposed Hildreth compressor station? I made reference to a compressor station that's called the Hildreth compressor station. All right, thank you. Where's that located, anticipated location? It's in Suwannee County. And do you know which city, or near which city in Suwannee County? Uh, it's, at, it's at the um, intersection of, of where Sable Trail will cross Florida gas transmission. Well, it's, it's near Hildreth, which is why it's called Hildreth. Have you heard of a town called O'Brien? With regard to the um, the that central uh, I'm using the wrong word hub in Osceola. Your reference to Osceola County is Compression station in Osceola? There is a compressor station in Osceola. Has a permit been applied for yet for that? It has. Has it been granted? Checking your honor, we need to clarify. He said permit. We have a number of permits. I mean, if you're talking about the, the has DOP there, or yeah, air has there, permits. Has a permit been applied for for the Osceola compression station? It's good. Has the permit? The ERP, environmental resource permit, been applied for for the Osceola compression station. Yeah. And do you know if it's been approved yet? Okay. What, what this is, can I ask the attorney the answer? If you know. Uh, okay. Yes. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you made a reference to response to a question of who is going to operate this project? Correct. Right. And you said there would be executives, employees, experts, and subcontractors. Is that correct? Uh, not entirely. How's that incorrect? 
I don't believe I said executives. I believe I said employees of Spectre Energy Corp as well as contractors and consultants. Uh, how many employees does Spectre Energy have? I don't know. Any idea who your subcontractors would be? Any idea who they are? Yes. Uh, there's, there's a number of them. Can you name I some? Can. can I name some? Can you name three? Can I name three? Um, there's uh, TRC, there's Cardinal Entrix, there's. Um, I can't hear you, sir. NVP. I'm trying to hear myself. NVP, did you say? Cardinal Interest? Cardinal Entrance. I'm not sure it's Entrance. And what was the third or the first? TRC. TLC? TRC. TRC. So that's three that you suspect maybe subcontractors on this project? Correct. Any reason to believe they will be subcontractors? I believe they may be. Any contracts yet? Yes. Okay. With one of these three contractors? With at least one of those three contractors, yes. Okay. You made a, a reference to employees of Spectra. Were you referring to, uh, well, let me ask, what type of employees does Spectra have besides administrative? Spectra, well, Spectra Energy is a midstream energy company, so what we do is build projects to provide natural gas transportation uh, for end users. So we have engineers, we have accountants, we have um, financial folks, you know, we have a number of people that make up a corporation that provides the services we do. All right, so when you were referring to the, uh, the employment, you were referring to employment for your companies and employment opportunity for some com subcontractors and the employees of Spectra Energy. Is that correct? Correct. Do you see any other employment opportunities outside of the subcontractors and Spectra Energy's employees? I don't understand the question. Uh, with regard to a, a statement that this would create, um, well, the question actually you responded to was who would, who would, uh, who would build this? Lose the question. Right. So, aside from Spectra employees and the subcontractors, do you see other participation by other um, industries? Right. I mean, when when Spectra engages to build a project, they'll do it either through their own employees or through third party employees. Did they, uh, okay, thank you. You made a reference of expert, including. Uh, those with uh, experience with agency compliance and mitigation. I'm making a reference. Uh, can you give me an example of, um, of a of mitigation uh, past experience that is part of that reference? Other projects that, that those employees would have been yes. participating in? Yes. Oh, the inspector has a, a quite a portfolio of projects. One of the most recent that comes to mind uh, would be in the Northeast United States would be on our uh, New York, New Jersey ladder, uh, more specifically in Florida, the Gulf Stream natural gas system. So uh, some of the questions before this, so your reference to experts including uh, those with agency compliance and mitigation, you're referring to Spectra employee those employees? Would, those would again either be Spectra employees or through the third party consultants. Is there a uh, operating contract proposed for the length of time Spectra will operate this pipeline? There are formation agreements, joint venture agreements that all of them include service agreements that would govern the operation of the pipeline. Would you consider them long term? Yes. And what number of years would be a, a range yeah. of long term? I don't know. They, 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 they don't have a specified term, you know, just perpetual and perpetual as long as the pipeline is there. You are familiar with a gentleman by the name of Bill Yardley? Yes. And, and how do you know of Mr. Yardley? Uh, he's the president of uh, 
Spectra Energy Seahouse Gas Transmission and Storage Business Unit. Are you uh, aware of any uh, projections of shareholder uh, value maximization made by Mr. Nordley with regard to this project? Actually, Your Honor, I think we're beyond the scope of direct at this point. Or what we're talking about, Ralph, please. Um, goes to the statement that this would create competition, be tremendous opportunity, get employment. I'll you know, pursue this and see if it's relevant. Uh, are you aware of any uh, projections made by Mr. Yarley of the value of shareholder maximization this project would bring? I, I'm not specifically. No. If, if I uh, stated to you that there's an estimate that it would um, maximize value by 25 billion by the end of the decade, would that sound reasonable to you? I'm not familiar with that statement. Is shareholder value part of your administrative oversight? Uh, I am an employee of the corporation. You're a shareholder as well? Correct. So you have a I have no opinion whether or not the $25 billion by the end of the decade would be accurate or not? I don't have any reference to points for that. Mm -hmm. You stated that you had the uh, number of required mm -hmm. credits for the pipeline? I, I indicated we had our mitigation credits in hand. Yes. Do you know what that number or value is? I do not. Do you know if it's been tendered? Like paper? Has it been recognized and acknowledged as sufficient? Uh, it's my knowledge, yes. Do you know when that occurred? I do not. Do you know when the accumulation of the credits occurred? Sufficient? As, as to time, I do not. Do you know if this project exhausts the mitigation credits available to Al Spectra Energy? Stated they had the number of mitigation credits. It has nothing to do with whether they exhausted anything or not. As long as the mitigation credits might be an issue in this case with the environmental resource permit, but whether the parent company has exhausted, I'm not sure what that what that would mean, why it would be relevant. It's just relevant whether they got the credits they need to determine in this case. I got one, but you have a question. Uh, uh, sir, have you uh, heard of our, know of a pipeline by the name of Spectra and Williams in the Gulf Spring? A natural gas pipeline uh, referred to as Spectra and Williams? That's, uh, that there's, there's no pipeline referred to as Spectra and Williams. I have, I have nothing further. Thank you. I redirect. Right. Nothing further, Ron. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You may step down. Let's take a five minute break. Oh, I should be 